from the stars like no other can. Bailey builds guitars with the wind and the sun. Mute it. You'll have to mute it, Carol. Hello, folks. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the workshop. That one there, look. <clears throat> For the guitar making channel. Gonna be a good one today. Today we're doing dovetails. So this here is my dovetail jig. This is really the key to it all. We'll talk a bit more about this in a minute. Um, but by the end of today, <laughs> fingers crossed, we're gonna get this body attached to this neck or the other way around. So just to recap, if you remember, we're doing this um, as, a, as a playlist. We're on, this is number 10 now. Um, so we started off making the individual parts, the soundboard, the sides and the back. We made the neck part and the fretboard. You can make those bits anytime you like, but there comes a point where you have to start assembling them. So we assembled the body and on the last live stream, you saw me glue the back on. So, um, one of the brilliant questions we had was um, that we glue the back on oversize and the front, we got glued on oversize and then trimmed back. So I'm gonna show you, um, I've got made a little film about what's happened between now and then, and I'm gonna bring you up to date with that um, first, and then we're gonna get on and I'm gonna do the dovetail. There's two parts to it. So um, if you've got any questions, put them in the comments and Carol will shout them out. Um, she's already got a hand up, so um, welcome folks, welcome. And yeah, I don't think anybody has ever done this before, by the way. Possibly the first time anybody ever in the world has done a dovetail joint um, live. Go on, Carol. Right, um, Bill Fluth's saying, um, have I starched your top as if I... Um, Bill, Bill Fluth's saying, have you starched your top because it's... it's uh, Getting it's some scratchiness. Scratchiness. So, um, Let me just adjust my underwear. <laughs> Oh. 
Yeah, it should be fine. It's not done it before. You never have to worry about me starching any of his clothes. Thank you. Are we on the right microphones and everything? I don't know. Okay, well, let us know how it goes with the sound. Um, hopefully it will be fine now. Maybe I won't move about so much. <clears throat> so we have our individual parts, um, but we can't glue our fretboard on or put our truss rod in until we've done the neck join. So today's all about that. Um, when two become one, there's a song there somewhere, isn't there? Yeah, and the key to it all is these, this jig here. So um, this jig, actually, the plans for this do not exist yet. Um, to be honest with you, this, this jig, I really just cobbled it together for myself. So it works perfectly well. But if I was building this again, there might be some changes that I'd make. Um, I guess what I'll do is give you a quick tour of the jig first. By the way, if you've got any questions, stick them in the comments. So there's two parts to a dovetail. The first part is cutting the hole in the body, and this is my jig for doing that. So the body gets clamped into here. You can see it's, there's a adjustable screw there which tightens, opens and closes this thing. And the body gets clamped in there. There's a soft face, some cork just to protect the face so it doesn't get damaged. And then a, a big fat chunky block. It's basically just a box, but I've made quite a chunky back to it so that we can clamp it down. And um, a hole in the front where the where the router goes. So let me put that back on and I'll show you the front. So there are other versions of this jig. You can search on the internet for different versions of it. But the, um, the method's the same. So if I show you the method, you can search out your own jig or you can design your own like I did. So this is the one for, for mounting the body. And um, I used to make all my own templates and everything. Um, but in the end, I ended up buying one. So this is a Stumac template for dovetails and I modified my jig to fit my Stumac template. So this is adjustable up and down. Basically, this sits into a nice slot, a nice tension fit, so it slides up and down, doesn't move about, like that. And then we've got these nuts and bolts. <clears throat> In here are some threaded inserts, so I can lock this in place where I want it. Let's make sure I put it on the right way round, eh? So it's one of the more complicated jigs you'll see me use. But as you can see, it's not hugely complicated. It's basically a box made from 18 mil plywood and I've routed out a slot at the top here for my template to fit. Um, let's clamp my body into it. I'm going to show you how we line it up. So as you'll see in the film I'm going to show you in a minute, um, I've already drawn a centre line on this with a bit of luck you'll see um, right, Mark 
I'm gonna have, I'm gonna have to butt in. They can hear your heartbeat. <laughs> And Wayne F said he thought it was his. <laughs> thought it was his own heartbeat. Too. Right, I've turned it down a notch. Right, let me. <sighs> it's the excitement, isn't it? <laughs> it's an exciting one today. <laughs> They're all hearing your heartbeat. Well, that's we <laughs> like to connect BPM? everybody. We like to connect everybody. <laughs> Oh, no. Where's my heart? Which side's my heart on that side? I'll move it over. Yeah, oh dear. Professionalism straight out the window. We tried. Right. <laughs> right, I tell you what. Just oh, note that I've got the centre line already drawn on. And I'm going to use that to line up, um, line up in my jig. There it is, centre line already drawn up. And uh, that's how we, that's how I'm, that's what I'm going to use to align it into my jig. So I think before I actually do this, I'm going to bring you up to speed with where we are now. Have you got the film lined up there, Carol? I'm not, I need the screen for this, don't I? Right. So, give you a catch up where we are now. Um, so if you remember last time, I glued the back on using that, um, the rubber band. This thing. Um, and I've always wanted to, <laughs> when you take it off, it just sort of goes pew, 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 and unravels itself. I've always wanted to film that in slow motion, so I did that. So let's see what that looks like. Uh, and I'll talk you through um, from after we glued it on. So it's had overnight to dry, and then this is me taking off the, the rubber strip. So we just untie it, unravel the upper bout, and then the special effects kick in. Special effects department. <laughs> As you can see, the, the back is overhanging at the moment, and we're going to trim that back in a minute. But first this. How cool is that? Yes. I enjoyed that anyway. So now I'm using the router with the bottom bearing cutter to just trim off the excess. Easy peasy. But just note that because of the curve of the back, it's never going to be perfect. There's always going to be um, a little step in some areas. Um, it's usually right at the front there and right at the back by the end block and the heel block. Usually leaves a little overhang. Now, in order to fit my neck to my body, I need the area around that neck joint to be perfectly flat. Otherwise I can't fit, I can't get a good joint to it if it's not perfectly flat. So the router gets us so far. And then I'm gonna use a sanding block First I'll start with a small sanding block with some 80 grit on it and then I use a larger one with some 120 on to finish it off. Um, you'll see just now um, a close-up of the overhang that I'm talking about. So I do have another machine. Oh yeah, somebody was asking how do you get the block out? So just to prove it, you just take the nut out and then the block comes out. Easy peasy. What I should have done here is put it on some gripper mat to make it a bit easier to hold, but I just held it using my arm there, basically repeating the whole procedure on the front. Um, notice when I'm doing this, I'm always trying to route downhill. So I'm routing away from the apexes of the guitar. 
so this way, this way, and that's to avoid breakout. Always try and route downhill when you're trimming, away from the apexes. Easy peasy, that takes two minutes, what would have taken half an hour with a chisel and the sandpaper. But it's not perfect, like I say. By the way, if there's any gaps at the front, you can see a little gap where the neck's going to be, and especially at the heel area, you have to make sure you skip over those, otherwise the bearing will follow that. Here's me drawing on the centre line that you saw. So it's just where the glue line is, and I'm just making it a bit easier to see so that I can line it up in my jig by drawing it on with a pencil. So there's that little step I was talking about. Start with 80 grit and a smaller block. These are the things that people don't really tell you about. Um, but it's these little fiddly bits that make all the difference, you know. Like I'm saying, I can't fit um, a neck to something that isn't perfectly flat. So we start by giving it a, a lick with the 80 grit and I'm checking it with a ruler just to make sure that that surface is ready to accept the, the neck. You can probably tell by a little shadow there, it's not quite flat. Um, and I did actually edit this a bit, so it took a bit longer than what you see there. But you can see I'm working on just a flat area and it needs to be just enough for where the neck sits. So it doesn't have to be um, all the way around the guitar. Obviously, eventually it will, but um, it doesn't have to be at the moment. I'll get to that eventually. So, um, I'm going to go ahead now and start fitting it to the body. Carol's got a question before we start. Well, you've got some questions. Do you want to take the questions that you've got before you move on? Go on then. Right. Okay. So, um, uh, really quick one. Matt Toman um, is in the house and he said, what cutter is in the router? I'll you show you there? the cutters. We're going to use two different cutters. I'll show you those as we go. Um, but the, the main one we're going to use is, uh, is this dovetail cutter, which I'll, I'll show you a, a better picture of later. Notice the stacked bearings. So I'll, I'll show you both cutters um, as we use them. Go on, Carol. Right, sorry, um, I'm trying to answer the question as well. Okay, um, then Rick de Natal over in the States asked, um, so, well, it's quite really, he said, so you bind after the next fitted? This guitar's not going to have any binding. So um, it's quite cool and trendy at the moment not to have any binding at all. Um, I quite like it, it's quite neat. Now, um, this was actually specified by Ricky, who I'm making it for, and um, we did a design session. So what we do, if I'm building a guitar for somebody, we can now do a Zoom session where I literally lay out the, the, um, a blank piece of paper. We've got all these cameras, so I can show you all the angles. And um, we can literally design a guitar over the internet. That's what we did with Ricky. We went through all the options, and he, he didn't want any binding on it. So obviously, if somebody says that, then I'll, I'll tell them the, the pros and cons of that. Obviously, binding is there for a reason, to protect the edges. Um, but it's not essential. If you don't have binding, it makes building the guitar a little bit more difficult, actually, because you've got to make sure that you get perfect joints all the way around. Um, so it makes it just a little bit more tricky, but we'd hope to be doing that anyway. But that's one of the bonuses of binding. Apart from that, it looks nice. Um, it can cover up a multitude of sins. So, um, reasons to do it, reasons not to do it. Ricky decided um, not to have any binding. So, um, usually I would bind before I do the neck joint, but, but actually you can do it either way around. It's easier to bind it before you cut this big hole in the front. Um, but you don't have to, you can do it either way around. Normally, I would bind the guitar first and then proceed to um, cut the neck joint. Um, one of the reasons I do that is because whenever you bind, inevitably you've got to do some sanding and then 
when you sand this, your neck joint, believe it or not, gets a little bit looser. So um, actually that reminds me to tell you that when we are fitting a dovetail, um, we machine it to within, let's say 96% is what I'm aiming for. 95, 96% perfect. And then because this guitar isn't sanded and finished yet, they always change just a tiny little bit. The neck usually gets a little bit looser after you've sanded the body a little bit more. Um, the neck can get a little bit looser. So what I do is I fit it 95%. Um, and then when the guitar's um, sprayed and ready for assembly, then we do that last little tiny little bit of fitting. So um, what I'm aiming for today, um, and if you remember, if you look at the, th the thumbnail for this video, you can see that the, the dovetail neck is sticking up just half a mil or a mil. And that's what I'm aiming for, because then we can just easily, easily finish it by hand, just to get that last little mil. So, um, yeah, we're not going to aim for it to be absolutely perfect right now, because then after we've sprayed it, finished it, and done all the footering, you probably find it'll be too loose. So we aim to leave it just slightly too tight and then we're going to finish it by hand after the guitar is finished. Hopefully that makes some kind of sense. Okay, so just two more things. A couple so, more so things before Just to start. clarify then, Rick de Natal says, so if you were binding, you would do the neck joint, you would do the neck joint first. No. No, if I'm binding, if I... If you were binding, you had done the binding first. Usually I would bind the body and then do the neck joint. That's what it was just telling Okay, um, so then the, uh, there are there is two other things that it's worth doing now. Um, the very first question today was from Sebastian um, in, over in Ireland. He said, is there any advantage to, to a dovetail joint? You know, why would you choose a dovetail? Okay, well, the two types of joint we do, um, in fact, what the guitarmaking.co.uk website is all about is the Guitar Making Academy. So... If you join up and become a premium member, then you get access to all my premium courses. So this is a live stream where things go wrong, as you've probably already noticed. And um, I waffle and you have to be patient <laughs> and wait for me to get on with it. Um, but on the on the courses, on the online courses, um, we've cut out all the waffle. There's only step by step guide to designing and building your own guitar. So um, I think I'll add myself one joke. <laughs> if you find it, then um, email me, let me know. If you find it funny, email me, because that'd be fascinating. <laughs> um, yeah, so no messing about. It's just a step-by-step -step guide. Each video is 10 or 20 minutes. I think each job should take 10 or 20 minutes. Um, there's about 50 or 60 jobs for an electric, a few more for an acoustic. But I, I literally believe that anybody can do it. In fact, I know anybody can do it because I've taught over 400 people face to face here in my workshop. So that's what it's all about. And if that's what floats your boat, subscribe to the YouTube channel, but also go and check out the website. And if you want the full courses, then you need to become a premium member. Now, on the Build Your Own Acoustic course, you will see me demonstrating a bolt-on neck technique, which is a fantastic method of attaching the neck it's it's um, from the outside it looks exactly the same as a dovetail and nobody can tell so it's not a bolt on where you put great big bolts on through the back of the body that's horrible like the old fashioned echoes no it's a proper mortise and tenon and we use um, we use these uh, barrel nuts inside the neck so uh, a barrel nut inside the neck and then this inside the guitar, kind of like this, two of those. Makes setting the neck angle really easy and especially if you're a beginner, makes attaching the neck um, a lot easier than a dovetail and it's, it's the angle you see that complicates things. So um, setting the neck angle is going to be in the second half of this video. By the way, I'm going to reserve the... Um, just in case we run out of time because there's two parts to doing a dovetail we might end up doing the second part in the next live stream let's see how the time goes depends how many questions we get and all that kind of thing so um 
On the online courses, we use a bolt-on neck using these um, fantastic barrel nuts. It's really cool. Um, don't be put off by the fact that it's called a bolt-on neck because it's really neat and impossible to tell from the outside. Um, and also it's really solid as well because it's bolted on. So um, the advantage of a dovetail is you don't need to buy any bolts. <laughs> Disadvantage is uh, it's a lot more difficult. Um, in, in our case, I've had to go to the expense of buying a cutter and an extra cutter and, um, and making this jig. Um, traditionally, a dovetail would be done with a handsaw and a chisel. So um, that's for the clever luthiers out there. Us guitar makers tend to use routers for this kind of thing. So. Am I all right to carry on? Just one last thing, because um, in the video you showed to you, you were unloosing all the binding and Theron's in the house, he's in the workshop today, and um, it was Theron that got you the, the uh, tire. Oh yeah, the, um, the rubber yeah. wrap that we used to rope the back on um, came from Theron. So if anybody has any trouble finding one, email me. I said this in the last one, Theron. <laughs> email me, because he sent me a box full. So if you're one of our premium members, and you can't find any rubber to rope your back on, email me and I'll send you a bit. And you've already had one person put their name down for that. <laughs> is it? James Bissett, yeah. is it? Yeah. So, right, I'm gonna go right ahead now and do part one of um, the dovetail, which is the mortise in the body. So we always do the mortise first, and then we do um, the, the tenon on, on the dovetail, on the neck, to fit into it. So I'm going to show you how we put it in. So I've got my centre line to line up and on my jig here there is uh, a centre line. So we can line that up. Pop it in. Making sure that it's lined up at the top and the bottom. So as I always say, half the battle with a lot of these jobs is holding the workpiece. So a jig is to hold the workpiece. Torches are useful to make sure everything's right. Oh, bear with me a sec folks while I just make sure it's perfectly aligned. And then, if I just tighten these handles here, how tight? If you hear a crack, stop. Now I've also got um, a thing to check here. I can check this gap here to make sure it's the same as this gap here. So we could measure that. Just to make sure that the body is sitting flat. And we can adjust it by, with these. So I'm quite happy now that my, um, whoa. My body's sitting in the right place. Um, if you bear with me, folks, while I just set the camera up, because uh, what I'd like to do is edit this into a shorter video. So I want to make sure we get all the shots. And anyway, you'll get to make sure you see everything. So can you see camera three, Carol? Interesting. Yeah, hopefully you can see yeah, it's good. Well, the centre line there. Yeah. I'm going to get some more light on it. Brilliant. Can you Do see you want... the centre line? Yeah. Do you want to see the whole... Slightly... I need to adjust it. Um... Okay. Brilliant. Do you 
look at you're looking for the center line on the jig right the camera three do you want me to put it on camera three so you can see so there we go slightly I think the camera angle is a bit it doesn't it's good enough Take my word for it, it's lined up with the centre. It doesn't line up very well on camera, I think that's the problem. Well, it's because you're not looking at the centre line, that's not a centre line. Oh, okay. um, maybe I'll point the centre line out. The centre line is here on the body, and it's there on the jig. Right. Yeah, the word program obliterates that on my screen, but it's fine. Doesn't matter. Um, so, there's a question about the the kind of cutters that we use so this here is not enough light let me move it up just to get a picture of the cutter okay so this here is a straight cutter with three bearings on it <laughs> because if you look in my jig there's a bit of a gap between um, the top of the guitar there and see my finger can go underneath so you've got to make sure the bearing can't go underneath the easiest thing to do is just to stack bearings okay change camera Carol please See when I'm moving the camera. If you change the camera, that'd be great. I just looked away briefly. Sorry. Shake your tambourine a bit. So um, this is the first one I'm using, and then I'm going to switch to um, to a. Then I'm going to switch to this one. So um, the reason being that we do the bulk removal of material with a cheap cutter. Straight cutters are a lot cheaper um, than dovetail cutters. So we do the bulk removal of material with a straight cutter. And then we go to the dovetail cutter to finish off. So the size of this hole, um, basically the depth of a dovetail is about 16 mil or 5 eighths of an inch. Um, so I'm going to go 14 mil, 14 or 15 mil, um, and I'm going to leave just that last little bit for the dovetail cutter to finish off. And how we set it this way, you can see um, my body ends there. I don't know if you can see that. Guitar body ends there, so I don't want my slot coming out the back of the body. So I'm going to make sure I stop maybe quarter to a half an inch away from the bottom. As you can see, I'm just eyeballing it, so there's no exact measurements. The only other thing to watch out for is this bit here at the top. It can't be wider than the fretboard, otherwise you'll see it. So if I um, measure that, fretboard at the 14th fret is about 56 mil. Make sure that's less than that. It's about 45. So that's good. So I am going to go for that. Let's tighten it up there. And that's basically ready to go. So. Just to reiterate about these jigs, there are plans for these all over the internet. You'll find your own plans, um, or you can design your own like I did. But you'll need something like this. Goggles. Carol. Goggles and mask for this. Ear defenders if you want them. I'm gonna use my um, my mask to tie my hair back as well. My luscious long hair. So yeah, people have noticed as well when I'm routing, 
sometimes you can hear my um, my brain waves coming through the microphone. Sometimes my thoughts come out through the microphone. And let's hope that doesn't happen today. Um, remember, I'm going to set it to 14 mil. Carol, action. So I'm going to take my router down to touch the wood. And then I've got I've got my uh, stop here. So I take the router down to touch the wood. So I need to tell the router that that's our zero point. So we do that with the depth stop. Bring that down, dial in zero. And now I'm going to dial in a gap of 14 mil with one hand. Okay, let's see if we can get a good shot. Okay, so I've set myself a gap of 14 mil. I'm going to double check that just because we're live on the internet and I don't want it to go wrong. So um, to avoid breakout, what we do is we cut across the front here first and then I'll go ahead and cut the rest of it like so. Close enough for rock and roll. So now I change the cutter. Uh, Okay, so now we have to move, we have to move the um, pattern now. To, because um, there's a little offset on the bearing. If you look, the bearing's actually um, camera three. The bearing's actually bigger than the top of the cutter there. Can you see that? Yeah. Just about. So I'm going to take it down to touch the wood and I'm going to set it to 16 mil this time. Uh, zero. 
16 mil. It's actually better to go just a bit over. There's nothing worse than your neck just bottoming out in that slot. So just over 16 mil, 16 or 17 mil. Now this time we have to go around the whole thing in one. There's no plunging up and down. I go down to maximum depth and leave it there. Okay, so you can't plunge up and down otherwise you end up with a stepped slot. Okay, going for it. Make sure that's tight. Check twice, cut once, folks. Not going to touch the depth on this router now just going to lift it out put it to one side and check i want to check that my angle has gone all the way to the top just to make sure that i haven't just got a half a dovetail and that looks pretty good to me i don't know if you can actually make out the dovetailness of it but the edges of those holes aren't square see that there look. the actual angle doesn't really matter any dovetail cutter will work um, you just want to try and get a long one that's like 17 or 18 mil the, the cutter length is at least 17 or 18 mil so there we go part one done while I'm taking this out Carol let me just take it out and I'll show you what it looks like and then we'll have some more questions. There we go, look at that. You might notice um, one thing I did was I stopped before I got right to the end of the slot. Um, obviously I'm not going to just blindly ride, route out the bottom. Um, so I didn't want to do that. So I um, manually just stopped before I got to the end. I don't know if you noticed as well, but while I was routing, um, when it gets to the end of this, this slot, then the router is suddenly trying to cut on both sides of the cutter at the same time, and it really doesn't like that. So I try to take as much of the bulk out the middle first and then gently down the edges, and I'm trying to steer clear as much as possible from the edge, because that's when it's cutting on both sides of the cutter that's when it makes nasty noises and things go pear-shaped so that's the 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 mortise done on the body beautiful Right, so you're ready for a couple of questions then? Yeah. I mean, there aren't loads. I think, I think actually, do you know what? The chat went completely quiet. Yeah, um, everyone's concentrating. But because <laughs> um, the shot, I mean, did I, I say I, anything? The, the the shot of you, the the cutter. Yeah, was it good? Oh, it's it's brilliant. It's I, I never get bored. Of Where else can you get this, folks? Have you ever seen anyone do a dovetail and neck on live on the internet before? I haven't. <laughs> Well, and, and do you what could possibly go wrong? The very first video that we made, which is quite old now, it must be 20 years old now, but um, the, the best, the most brilliant shot in that was, was um, routing out 
the neck joint, wasn't it? And yeah. Close up was just, and the the sawdust bouncing off. Very cinematic. Anyway, you've got a serious question. <laughs> um, so Robin um, and then Matt Beals agreed, and they wanted to know how 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 do you decide how far to move the template? You know what what. What's your criteria for moving the template? Well, I just wanted the, the neck joint to go as far down the body as possible without coming through the other side. Doesn't actually matter. The, the length of this, um, where am I? The length of this slot doesn't actually matter, but obviously you don't want to come out the back and, and um, it doesn't want to be ridiculously short but um, I was trying to use as much of the side as I've got to get a, a stronger neck joint as possible. Um, let me just give you a little tour of the next part, the next jig. So this here is the neck part of it. And my neck is gonna fit on this side. I've got some um, clamps to hold it on. And there are these um, pins, there's pins here. So the pins, there's three pins, they're all quarter of an inch, exactly the same size as my router cutter. And so that fits into there perfectly with no movement, solid. So that's how I clamp my neck on. Just put that on like that and you can see. Um, and the important part of this jig, if I just take that neck off for a minute, is obviously it's got the it's got the place on the end again for the the reverse of the the previous one. So this is the tenon version. Again, I've bought these from Stuart McDonald, um, but you can you can make your own. I used to make all my own, but there comes a point where um, with because um, I haven't got my own CNC machine, I'm doing everything by hand. There comes a point where it's easier just to buy something like this. Um, so that's what I did in the end. Although I have got a stack of these different versions of dovetails. Because it doesn't have to be angled, it can be just straight, you see. Because it's still dovetailed. Um, so there's different versions of the dovetail with different angles on, different shapes. Um, I used to make all my own, but now I'll buy them. So there's that part, but then the really important part is the the way you can angle this jig. So it's basically um, a handle on this side and a handle on this side, threaded rod through the middle. And then that enables you to um, adjust. Can you see the angle changing? Turning the screw. What's it doing? It's there somewhere, Carl. So, um, yeah, and then I can lock it down, you see. So there's basically, there's a, a lock-in nut in there. You know, um, one of those nuts with the plastic bits inside. There's a lock-in nut in there. You might not be able to see. Um, and then a handle on each side. And that enables you to adjust this to, um, to different angles. Simple as that. I'll wind it back because the angle is only very, it's only going to be like one or two degrees, hardly anything at all. So that is the, 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 um, the neck angle jig. So it's basically two, two bits of wood and, and a hinge here and a way to lock it at a particular angle. This is 90 degrees and, and then you've got your plate on the top. Simple. So you can design your own or um, look around the internet and you'll probably find better versions of it than this. This is just my version that I cobbled together for myself. What I will do is I'll work on a more um, easy to put together version and maybe, um, maybe we'll ask our pal Darren to see if he can come up with anything on his CNC for you guys. So he's already spotted, he's already spotted the... Uh... Right. So Darren, if you're there, yes. I'm going to email you. And if you're up for it, it would be wonderful if we could come up with some kind of um, 
like um, an as assembly kind of thing that people could put together themselves. Um, that would be awesome. Something along the lines of your amazing fret jig. Carol's got her hand up. Well, you keep moving, you move the subject on, right? That's why I had my hand up about 10 minutes ago because the question about the moving the template was actually in relation to when you switch the dovetail cutter. So, um, so what was that? Oh, I just took out the very bare minimum just to turn it from a straight cut into an angled cut. So I just took a shave off. Um, obviously it depends on how big your bearing is and how big your cutter is. So I can't give you exact measurements. It will depend on um, the exact ones that you get. Um, but what I did was I just, I just nudged it a little bit to take out um, the minimum amount of wood to change it from a straight slot to an angled slot. Hopefully that makes some kind of sense. Sometimes I don't take quite enough and you end up with with the kind of a half angled slot. Um, and then what I do is I just adjust it a bit more and take a bit more until that angle goes right to the top. Make sense? I think that's what they're asking. And, um, cool. and then on the back of that, Richard Papello um, over in New York, he said that um, he asked, to, do you, can you get the cutters, to, can you buy the cutters that are skinnier so that you don't have that? Um, when you get to the far end, can you get thinner, the same cutter? Well, not really. If you look at the cutter, I'm about to change this cutter again. So, um, oh, I'll take, obviously I, I need to switch back to the other one again for this. So I'll show you. Um, it couldn't be a lot thinner if you look. It couldn't be a lot thinner because It would snap. Right. See, look, if you look at the top there, it's actually the same thickness as the shank. Do we have any more questions, Carol, before I? Move on. Um, well, no, just but that another uh, Richard Pipello um, was was mentioning earlier on about um, LMI selling. Um, uh, there's a guy that's designed jigs and things, and he he said that um, you should you should have plans and uh, jigs available. Um, you should, Mark. Yeah, so of course I should. Worth saying. Yeah, that's what a proper businessman would do, isn't it? We have got. <laughs> there are some. Um, plans yeah. for some of your jigs aren't we there? will get there for some of them Mark, there's plans yeah um if course. you go to the website um join up as a community member it's completely free to join the forum then there's a whole set of free patterns that you can get for the electric guitar if you want the acoustic guitar patterns then you need to become a premium member but um there's a whole load of patterns there for you to download and there's also on the courses there's a whole sections one for electric, one for acoustic. But this whole section on just making all the jigs. Um, the dovetail would be what I'd consider a, a bonus section material. So this is going to end up in the bonus section when we've edited it all down and cut out all of, you know, when Carol abuses me and all that. <laughs> we'll cut all that out <laughs> and, uh, and we'll turn it into a, a video. Um, in fact, what I might do is if we can come up with something with Darren, I'll probably do this all again with our new version of the, the new Spangly jig. Um, and eventually it will end up in the bonus section. I would still recommend for beginners that you, um, uh, that you use the bolt-on method mm. because it's better than you think. Um, it's better than it sounds. You'd need to go and watch the course just to appreciate it, but um, it's a real class acoustic guitar joint. A lot of top end makers now are bolting them on. You just have a look inside and you'll see. And Mark, um, um, somebody earlier on in the chat said it also makes it easier to remove if you've got any problems with your neck. You know, yeah, that's another good point. Well done whoever said that. I think it was written in a towel. Um, so I'm putting one, this cutter one back thing, in. Though, Mark, Go one on. last thing um, Bag Press said, uh, he said, hey, I like the registration pins going into the trust rod slot. Uh, Cool, isn't it? 
Neat, yeah. I reclaimed that. That was um, a strip of brass rod that I found and just happened to be exactly quarter of an inch. So I, I cut an inch um, or half an inch pieces. I can't remember now. They're probably about three quarters of an inch long, the pieces, and rounded the end over. And they make perfect little things. They fit perfect. So can I go ahead and do stage two now, Carol? That's why not. Thank you. So stage two of fitting a dovetail is a little bit more tricky because we've got the angle involved. Um, I'm going to show you how we go ahead and do that. But as we did with the body, we're going to be using um, two cutters, starting off with the straight cutter again. So I'll get my router ready. Now, um, what I can do here is when we're building, when we're building anything out of wood, actually, it's always a good idea to make everything slightly bigger than it needs to be, because you can always cut bits off, but you can't put it back on, right? So we've left this neck slightly too long, slightly longer than it needs to be. Um, for a bolt-on mortise, this would be right. This would be about an inch long, but for a dovetail, it's going to be um, 16 mil or about five eighths of an inch. Alrighty. So I'm going to cut this down a bit first. And um, I'll, when I cut it, I want to cut it at the correct angle would be nice. So let's just set up how we do the angle. And um, I'll show you how we can do that. So. Um, it's two o'clock by the way, Mark. Okay, well I'm going to just crack on and do it yeah, anyway. Depending. We'll have it done in 10 minutes to 15 minutes. As long as you don't keep interrupting me. Let's impress the ladies. Are you impressed, Carol? Oh. never worked right um, how to set the angle so we need the body and we need to know where the bridge is so if I put my fretboard on there then what I can do is measure down and mark on the scale length so I've got my fretboard lined up with the 14th fret there. I've got the end of the ruler Where is it? lined up with the nut here. 14th fret here. 14th fret. And then I can mark on the bridge location. 25 and a half inches is close enough. So at this point here, if I put a ruler along, I want to have a little gap here. Um, so it wants to be about a two mil gap here. About here on the scale. If we put a ruler along the neck, we need about a two mil gap here. Okay. No. So how do we do that? What we do is we put our body on here and press it flat on the deck and then I put a ruler on here. I know what I need to do. What I need to do is go here. How's that? So I'm going to set my angle like this. So what I can do is adjust these until I've got my two mil gap. 
at the top there. Okay. Can you see that a little gap at the top there? So you put the light a bit. Bring it round this way. Do you want to change the angle while I set it up? Let's try it here. Hopefully you can see there's a little gap there. I can't see a thing. Well, I'll take your word for it. So we can adjust that until it's as close to about two mil as possible. I'll just check that again. So we put the ruler up against the that angle plate there, and then I can put my body on and check the angle. Yeah, that looks good. One on three. Yeah, that's it. No, there isn't an angle now. I've just done that for myself. Yeah. Um, do you want to try that one more time, see if we can see it? Oh, I need another hand. That's as good as we're going to get. So, put the body to one side. Now I'm going to put the neck into the jig. Take this pattern off. Watch this. Um, Pencil. I'm going to measure down 16 mil and make a mark on the edge there. Double check. 16 mil. Can you see that mark? Yeah. So now if I put the, the neck in. It's, we know that the angle's set, and so um, so what I can do is just line that mark up there with a ruler. Can you see that? There's my mark. I can line that up. And then just draw it on. Draw it all the way around. Now it's easy to just chop that on the bandsaw. I'm heading to the bandsaw, Carol. Oh my goodness, you never told me that. Oh, okay. It's only a really quick cut.
beautiful. Now we can pop it in to the jig. And what I can do is bring it up. Oops. What we do is just bring it up until it touches this plastic bit. Just like that. But it's up just against there. Got to make sure it goes in the same every time. So this is a bit of trial and error. We have to um, We might have to take the neck in and out a couple of times until we get it right. So what I'm doing is just putting um, some wedges underneath the clamps to make them a bit tighter. Yeah. So I'm just using some scraps of wood um, underneath here can you see that Carol Where are you? camera Where three you? just to make it a bit tighter only because my bolts aren't long enough I just need to make some longer bolts but like I say it's cobbled together for me this jig isn't for sale it's just cobbled together for me so you didn't really need to see that at all I'll set the camera up again now so here we go So this is a lot easier actually because we're just going to start from a big fat, the fattest point of the jig. We can take a cut and then we can just keep moving it up until it's right. I'm going to do bulk removal of material with, um, with the straight cutter again. So again, I haven't even done any measuring. I'm just going to set the depth to 15 mil, mil again. So taking the cutter down to touch the wood. Lights everything, isn't it, folks? Hopefully, we'll be getting some new ones soon. So, zero. I'm going to set it to 14 mil again. The, the order we do this is important. I'm actually going to go around the outside first and then around the inside, and that's to avoid breakout. Mask up, goggles on.
fantastic. Changing the cutter. Was a, a few people worried that it was slightly off centre, but it was—it's actually the angle of the camera, it's the, the shadow of the camera. Change the camera. It's, it's the sham. It's the shadows. It's—it's it's an optical illusion. Um, they were—they've were just been helpful. Cheers, folks. Appreciate it. You never know. You might be right. Oh, they're all joining, they're all saying it looks off centre now. <laughs> but I said it's hasty cam. It's hasty cam. You had to set out that one up quickly, didn't you? Now I'm gonna move this up again. I see what they mean, it does look even more of a head it looks off centre, but it's that's a rubbish angle. I'm going to set the depth at 16 mil now. What's that angle, Carol? That's camera four. No, there's enough that I can't actually see anything. Right. Thank you. Well, camera four, you can't see the alternate thing in there. What's that? So, taking the cutter down to touch the wood again, I have to reset it every time because um, obviously. I might put the cutter in at a different place every time. 16 mil. Basically, I've set a gap here of 16 mil. And then the router can plunge down 16 mil. Perfect. So again, I can't, we can't do it in steps this time. It has to be done all in one go. So, um, Especially at the end here, I'm going to have to be really careful just to take off little, little bits at a time. And uh, let's see what happens. So full depth, round the outside first, and then small cuts until we get to the middle. Wish me luck. See you in a minute. To leave it locked exactly where it is. Not gonna, um, not gonna adjust the router at all now. Just put it down out of the way for a minute. Now we can take the neck out and test it in the body. <sighs> Unfortunately, there's cameras everywhere. I haven't got a lot of space, so let me move that camera a bit. And I'll do it here. Okay. Can you get a shot of me here? Uh, so take the neck out. And there we go. So uh, that's that's it done roughly obviously now it's just a case of uh, test fitting and we just take a little bit more and a little bit more until it fits it's not far off look 
Um, no, it's actually hitting the bottom. So oh, it's gone tight. No, it's not bad. So one problem that you might have is that it might it might bottom out there. So you can check that by putting it in here and seeing you can actually look look here. I, I can see that I'm gonna need to take off a little bit from the bottom of my uh, neck joint now. So I'll just do that now. It's easy to do with a little saw and a chisel. Gonna need a bigger saw, I think. We'll try that though. around the corners. Let's try that again. So you can see that it's still sticking out. It's gone tight, but it's still sticking out uh, a quarter of an inch there. So that means I can move my um, this thing by the same amount. So um, I usually just eyeball it. We could actually measure it. If we measure that at the moment, it's six mil. I said quarter of an inch, didn't I? 6.3 mil. Um, so we put this back in. Till it just touches. Lock it. Right, so I'm now going to move this, if we look uh, from the top, I'm just going to move this quarter of an inch up to loosen it first. Quarter of an inch up. I'm going to do it slightly less because, like I say, it's best to have um, best to have a little bit sticking out the top. Slightly too tight rather than slightly too loose because we're going to do the final fit in later. So I'm not going to touch the depth. It's going to be exactly the same depth. Really it's just going to be taking a shave off the side of these.
Right, let's have a look at that then. Look at that. Beautiful. Again, I need to just take a little bit off the bottom, I think. Oh, I don't know. No, I think it's in. Yeah. There we go, it's tight. It's tight and there's about just a mill there sticking up. Can you see that? So I was lucky I got it on the second try. Look at that. Beautiful. There we are, so that is roughly how you do a dovetail. Um, yeah, I'm quite happy with that. I'm going to call that done. Smashing. So I can pick my guitar up with it, so I'm quite happy. I'm not going to tempt fate, but... <laughs> There we go. Put the strings on it. Um, now don't go away folks because um, I've had another question on the forum about cracks and splits from Eddie Cameron which I want to answer on today's session. So don't go away, we're going to get to that in a minute. Um, do we have any questions on the dovetail before, before we move on, Carol? Um, while I tidy up a bit. Um, Kai, Kai's in the workshop today and he, um, he's asked, uh, do you feel that there's any difference in tone between the a oh. dovetail or a bolt-on? No, I would defy anybody to tell the difference. Um, because what you want with a dovetail is, um, as it goes in, it pulls tight. This is pulling down tight against the body. Um, and that's what you want. You want the two bits to be biting into each other. Uh, that's what you want. Um, and so that with a with a with the bolt-on technique, that bit's easy. Because you just tighten the bolts and then you get a good um, acoustic couple between the two parts, I guess. Um, it's a little bit more difficult to achieve with a dovetail, um, but not impossible. Not recommended for the beginner. I would recommend that you do the bolt-on version. Tonally, I would defy anybody to tell the difference. Well, there's some um, can you say thank you to B Power and to Bill Flood because they've both sent you some beer money. Um, Cheers, guys. And, and Bill Flute says, all, all without a safety net. And, and generally, the, the chat... Oh, and Richard Pipello. No wonder you could hear my heart beating oh, Richard earlier. Richard Pipello sent you some... And me some beer money as well. Um, Cheers, Richard. You. And um, what, what people are saying is that um, there are quite a few people who are watching who don't... Who really don't have any... They're not going to build. They're not planning to build. <laughs> but they just find watching so interesting. Well, right? make sure to share it. Yeah. Because well, the, there might be other people like you as well. And they're saying that you know you you're the best. You're the best on YouTube. Wow, um, I wouldn't go that far, but I'll I'll take that and run with it. Thank you very much. I would appreciate all the super chats and to be honest, appreciate everybody who just stops by. Um, but um, what would be really great, folks, if you want to do something for us, obviously the best thing you can do is become a, a premium member, and then you get access to all the courses. Um, so you don't, it's not nothing for nothing. Um, you support us, we support you. Premium members get a discount in the guitar making shop and also access to all the courses. And also you get a button where you can just get a direct access to me. Ask a question, it comes direct to my inbox. So that's what our premium members get. And um, I forgot what I'm talking about. 
Well, what I was telling you was that people were just in the chat were just saying how interesting that was. And I think it's an honour. It, it's, it is a real honour to have people who, who are enjoying what we're doing um, as, as a thing, because it is... Yeah, I was saying how they can it. support us, that's it. So premium, become a premium member is the very best thing you can do. But even just click the like button or subscribe if you're interested in this kind of thing and you want to see more. Um, make sure to click the bell icon and click the all thing. Um, but, but also, um, leave a comment. So all you guys in the chat who've been chatting away, <laughs> leaving hundreds of chats, that's all great, but um, we also need comments um, after the live stream's finished, then the comments open down below the video. Um, so yeah, please everybody um, leave a comment because that will help the, the YouTube algorithm know that um, what we're doing is good and people are enjoying it. And you so, do get you do get a fair number of random questions, e even going back to, you know... Yeah, so if there's something that we didn't cover on this live stream, um, make sure to ask a comment or head over to the guitar making forum. But um, but yeah, you've interrupted me and I forgot what I was saying again. You were talking about asking people to write comments on, on the channel. Yeah, leave a what, comment. And what I was just saying. Go f all through my back catalogue, all through all my previous live streams and go and splatter them with comments. <laughs> because yeah, you, you, um, you probably don't realise how much that actually helps. And it does. So thanks <laughs> to all you guys who already have. Uh, right, so um, I've got one more thing to tell you. Cracks and splits. So Eddie Cameron, this is for you. Right, he's not here. He's had to go to Cornwall. It doesn't right, matter because you can watch it later. Watch later. I'll send you the link with the with the um, the time code right. so you can go straight to it. I've got no. Right, so. Um, can you read out the email, Carol? There's an email there. Email from Eddie. I'll have to find it. So Eddie's um, been donated or gifted or found or acquired um, a half-built guitar, but it's got some issues. And he was asking me. Well, um, I had it all lined up for you, Carol. Right, here we go. No, but you've got it's on your computer. No, it's on, I lined it up on yours. No, you didn't. Uh, you absolutely didn't, right? So um, let me tell you. So what what he's saying is that uh, uh, he. This is, so this is Eddie down in Devon. He's saying he inherited some lovely pieces of wood for acoustic guitar construction uh, when he cleared out the late Chris Eccleshaw's workshop last September. Some guitars were unfinished when Chris's students had to return to Japan in the 1990s, and I like to complete them if possible. Um, they've moved many times during several relocations, so some pieces have suffered trauma. I'm almost, oh, I'm almost ready for the transition from bolt-on uh, to glue neck, calf top, and acoustic builds with all of your help. So thank you. So. Right. So Eddie sent us a little video to have a look at these bits of wood. Um, so let's do that now. So the soundboard's started, look, there's a big crack on the side there. So yeah, that's split over the, the mould, hasn't it? Because the grain goes straight round there and it's split where, where it overhangs the mould. And there you can see the soundboard is coming apart on the, on the, on the seam. It doesn't look too bad though. And um, you can see one of the braces is already attached. There's already a sound hole brace. So, um, also the rosette's already in. So, there's, if we, if we go through the options, the, we could just cut, a, run a bandsaw down the middle and rejoin it, but that's gonna ruin the rosette and the bracing that's already on the back. So we can't do that. That's discounted. Um, to be honest, it do, really doesn't look that bad. Um, if we go back to the, the soundboard there, it 
So this part of the soundboard. It's going to be reinforced by the heel block. So and also the fretboard's going to be glued down on top of it. So that bit there isn't a problem. I mean, it's not ideal. It's not what you'd ideally have. But um, what I would do there is get some white glue, rub it into the crack, and then maybe just put some masking tape clamps on. I'll show you in a minute what to do. Um, and to be honest, I would do exactly the same thing with the sides. So the good news is they can be fixed quite easily. I would use white glue and masking tape or even just sellotape to clamp it. So let me see if I can just show you um, what I mean. Um, some masking tape, Carol. So here's a side, fortunately or unfortunately, <laughs> there's no split in this one, but I'll show you anyway what we would do. You're going to put white glue onto the crack and work it in a bit. Spend maybe a good minute or a minute and a half actually working the glue into the crack. Um, and then if you can I mean, you, you're lucky because it's already in the mould. Um, you could do it in the mould or, um, or try taking it out of the mould. Um, whatever's easiest. But of course, with any glue in, you're going to dry clamp it and check anyway to make sure everything's all right. But what I would do is work some... Um, work some glue in. Spend a good minute, minute and a half working it in, and then you can just tape it. So if you can do this, just tape it down like this, pull some tension on. I'm using sellotape here. Sellotape's good because it's clear and you can actually see through it. And believe it or not, that will be enough clampage to hold it. You can make sure it's sitting dead flat with your fingers there, rubbing it like that. Um, I'm thinking you might be better taking it out of the mould for this, but because you probably won't be able to get the tape on. And so take it out of the mould, and then that's how you want to clamp it up, just like that. That's all it should need. You can put more tape on if needed, but, um, but that'll fix it. And the other good news is that just, just like the other bit, um, this bit's going to be all reinforced in, in there. In this part of the guitar is a huge piece of wood, the tail block, which is going to reinforce this, this split. Um, one thing that you could do is glue a splint inside there to stop the crack from getting any bigger this way. That's the only thing I'd probably recommend. Um, glue in a, a, sp a splint about half an inch or three quarters of an inch wide with the grain going this way um, about an eighth of an inch thick a graft going on this way and that will stop the side from continuing to split um, and then good as new so um, yeah I don't think there's any reason why you shouldn't carry on and finish those instruments um, both of those cracks are all going to be reinforced um, eventually but I would glue them up first and then reinforce them so this bit here um, rub some glue in and then just from both sides you could put some tape on like this stretch it it's actually better to use um, or it might be better to use masking tape you could use masking tape or sellotape um, my advice would be try both and see which one works best for you. And you can actually pull pull tension on with this. Pull it tight and then stick it down. And that'll actually just pull those bits in and hold them tight for you. And 
that should be enough basically I would leave the things on for maybe um, half an hour or an hour peel it back clean off the excess and then put it back on um, or you could just leave the tape on overnight and then clean it up in the morning so yeah do some tests with some tape and see if you can close up the gap to be honest that gap there is so small that even if you can't close it up it's not going to be a problem just um, just run some glue into it let it dry and then carry on as normal because th that great big block in there is going to reinforce all this uh, well, Mark, just before you move on, um, Ian Jackson just asked um, uh, in relation to the cracks. Is would you might have said something about this already? But wood dust and glue, would you? Would no, you... I wouldn't put right. any wood dust and glue in there. Um, it's such a tiny crack; it doesn't need filling. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it needed any filling. And wood dust is going to actually just get in your way. I would suggest in this case, if it was a great big gap, then I might suggest um, something like that. Um, but to be honest, I would probably, I would probably recommend you use epoxy because that has excellent gap filling um, capabilities as opposed to ordinary wood glue if it was a big crack. Okay, so hopefully that answers that. And um, I just want to say thank you to all you amazing people who have got um, the patience to stick around <laughs> whilst we drop rulers on the floor and um, mess about with our cameras and uh, suffer through our lack of lighting. So thanks to you guys. Like I say, if you want to thank us back, leave a comment below um, after we're finished. Click the like button, subscribe and become a premium member. Carol's got her hand up. Well, there's two things I want to say at the end then, because one is you, you should thank um, Phil, uh, what's his name, Phil oh, Willingham. Phil Willingham, is, Philip Willingham is watching today and he said, thanks so much for today. He's thinking seriously about becoming a premium member. Um, Rock and roll. And so I was just saying that, oh, yeah. premium obviously members. they're going to be, um, the, the videos are a lot, a lot well, more edited, aren't they? Yeah, the videos for the online courses are obviously proper edited, unlike this, this um, live stream which is live <laughs> so yeah if you do become a premium member by the way then you're going to be entered into the draw um, to get lockdown Lucy out of my filthy hands and into yours so premium members get ent entered into the prize draw and we'll be doing the prize draw the last live stream of the month which is a week on Saturday I think a week today was it about um, a week I don't or know. so. Was it two weeks ago? I don't know. Um, Last live stream of the month. We're here every Wednesday and Saturday, at one pm. Okay, there's GMT. One, there's one more thing. There's one thing I need to say about that also. Go on, is that um, so? There are like, last time we mentioned that people have been gifting sort of three months memberships and stuff. Um, you can, if you didn't want to gift um, three months membership, you can. Some some a couple of people have gifted one month by just buying setting up a premium account and you, you you can you know you can gift a month to someone as well yeah so all um, you need is an active membership yeah. and you'll get um, a premium membership and you'll get entered into the prize draw if you if you're sign up for a year then you get more chances to win the rules are all in the description down there the, there's a link in the description to the rules so if you want to know how to get more chances in the prize draw then um, head over to the forum, link's down there, and uh, all the rules are down there. Well, Brilliant. One, one very last thing, right? Um, to show that we are we are slow sometimes, but we are quite responsive. So after on the after the last stream, in the last stream, you mentioned uh, the radius disc. It might have been the stream before. You talked about the radius dish. Yes. And one somebody in the chat, uh, I think it was Rock and Roller, somebody contacted uh, Bag Press and discussed having the radius dish made. Fantastic. So that's, that's in process. And um, Bag Press has got back to us to say, look, if you want to make a radius yep. dish. That would be great. so hopefully very soon, we're going to put the radius dishes in the shop. Um, but I, I have to talk to you about it, and we've got to talk to Bag Press before Brilliant. that happens. Okay, but, fantastic. But that's come out of... Um, so radius dishes coming soon. 
and hopefully a, a dovetail jig. Um, so fantastic. So. So that's everything from me. That and was exciting, from, wasn't it, folks? Num Number Crunches says that the courses, online courses, are great. They just lack a bit of Carol and Mark bickering. Yeah. Um, There's a lot less bickering on the. There's a lot less bickering. You should see. I said you should see the outtakes. Yeah, they're all on the cutting room floor. <laughs> So yeah. yeah, thank you very much for spending a bit of time with us today. Um, give you a last little look at our dovetail. Beautiful. Oh, so and so, Sebastian sent sent us some beer money, some euro beer euros. Oh, thanks guys. Thank you very much for that. Much appreciate Absolutely the super brilliant. chats. Happy weekend to you too. Um, Mark Ian Jackson, as you're showing that off, has got a quick question. Have you done a video with uh, showing a, gu a guitar strap jack plug fitting? Guitar strap jack plug. Mm. It's funny you should say that. So um, uh, that's basically would be what I would call fitting an acoustic pickup. Um, no, I, <laughs> I can't remember. I definitely did fit in an acoustic pickup, but I believe that the holes were already drilled. You didn't want to do it live, did you? You didn't want to put the holes... Not on that particular guitar, yeah. no. Um, so it is something that I'd like to do. Um, it's not going to be on this guitar, though, because Ricky doesn't want a pickup on his guitar. So... Um, What I will do is, I'll very quickly now tell you how I would do it. You can of course buy a very expensive drill, especially for drilling the end, pill, end pin holes um, for, for the pickups on acoustic guitars. Um, but they're always, it's always a half inch hole, 12.5 mil or half inch. So I'm just gonna put that down in case it falls down. So what I would do, is get, use my whole, whole range of drills. Start with a small one. And then go with a bigger one, and a bigger one, and a bigger one. Um, but the, the main thing to keep it as safe as possible would be, what I would do is drill with a small hole, drill first, and then I would countersink it with this. So that's a great big half inch countersink and it leaves a nice round neat hole which I can then I can then widen out with my bigger drills so that's what I do I start with a small drill and then I countersink it out to half an inch and then I go with a bigger drill a bigger drill and then a bigger drill to finish off um, that's that way you, you get a lot neater hole. Um, of course, I do it that way because I've got a whole set of drills and a countersink and I've got them already. Um, if you haven't got those, you might actually be cheaper just actually buying the proper drill for the job. Who knows? But these I've already got, so that's how I do it. Start with a small drill and widen it out. Um, rather than just going straight for the big drill. So that's my tuppenth worth, tuppenny apenny worth. Um, so yeah, brilliant. Once again, just thank you to everybody then who's tuned in for that. I believe that's the first time <laughs> anybody has ever done a dovetail neck joint live on the internet. Could be wrong, couldn't I? Prove me wrong. Yet another world first. Well, the, the, Mark, um, I know we're going to finish, but just to say that um, there are people in the chat and had their names who were saying that they'd pay extra. Premium Plus would be for um, all, all the normal benefits of premium, but with, with all the outtakes. <laughs> with all the outtakes. Uh, that would have to be really No, expensive. you don't want to see them, oh, folks. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> it's painful. <laughs> oh. <sighs> Because that acoustic course, we filmed it like sometimes really late into the night, didn't we? Yeah. Um, well, we didn't start filming until um, we, we did it all after work. Yeah. So we did a day's work and then we would start filming the acoustic course. I was doing about 
a video a week or at least one video a week for about two years to build that course. Um, some of you guys were there during that process and um, patiently waiting for the next video. Trimming their fingers. <laughs> you guys were building guitars faster than I could make the videos. <laughs> but now it's all done and it's all there waiting for you. Yeah. So all you need to do is become a premium member, sign up on the course and uh, you, can, um, you can watch it as many times as you like. By the way, some of you have let your premium membership lapse, so you won't be entered into the prize draw. <laughs> if you're, um, it needs to be an active membership, so make sure that um, it hasn't lapsed if, you're, if, you're, if you want to be in it to win it. Um, um, having said all that, thank you so much guys for your immense patience. Um, wait until right at the very end um, what can I say thank you very much and we'll see you next Wednesday or Saturday <laughs> depending on what day it is now um, of course the most important thing when you're doing a dovetail what is it check twice cut once see you next time folks